Yeah, so there, there's no world where, you know. Do you go back? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. be back there next week. My, my life there now is, is really integrating in with the community, trying to, um, trying to humanize the badge. Um, they use me for training <clears throat> stuff, and I go out to other agencies, mm. other departments, other units, and put on different courses for like high angle stuff with dogs. Um, try and contribute to the community as much as possible, but working the road is not a reality because you know you're too I, famous. It's not that at all. It's it's just that in middle America the show's huge and everybody knows. And when people, yeah, I just said you're too famous. Yeah. I, just I don't like that. I don't like. <laughs> and I'm like a Z level actor right here. But that's a, That's an important part of the process is is doing. If you want to call it humanization, I guess. <clears throat> Actually, we have a new show starting soon with one of the guys that founded humanizing the badge yeah uh, so that's a big deal right community policing in general is a big deal and getting back to that advocating for not you you, you can't be advocating <clears throat> for one side or the other you're advocating for the right solution for people and the only way that solution will ever come about is by the relationships with the community right. and the police department so you know if, if, <coughs> if, if it's a huge win for me personally if i can take the platform from the show mm -hmm. and integrate that into my community and help inspire kids to do to do good to chase their dreams mm -hmm. you know and to not think that cops are out there to throw them in jail you know and it's it's, it's worked really well it's one of the reasons why we uh started this podcast so it's uh, mike the cop and eric tanzi and it's uh police they're retired so they can say whatever they want which is great because uh some of the guys that are still on and you can attest to this you can't say shit anymore no. man or you're getting fired it's it's you know we live in a society now where you know just shut the fuck up and work you know right. so no good will come out of weighing in your opinion on anything no you're not going to change anybody's minds um you know just go out there and do the best job you can every single day and just look to be an asset um people don't want to have conversations these days they want to they want to run with the narrative that they formulated in their mind no. And, and you know, hey, live your best life. Yeah, but every actor's got an opinion. What's yours on Israel and Palestine? <laughs> You're such a piece <laughs> of shit. I'm gonna give you the same answer I gave you a little while ago. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck what I have to say. You know, listen, it's, it, it is, it's, it's been going on for thousands of years. Yes. You know, and it's like, sure, would would a peaceful solution between the, the two nations be awesome? A hundred percent. But. We're never going to be able to broker that because it's never been able to, you know, they need to work it out on their own. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm a Jew and, you know, it's. It's divided the town. You know that, right? With Hollywood. Oh, 100%. Dude, and it's everywhere. So people are choosing sides. Mark Ruffalo got in some hot water. I was talking about it uh, on one of the shows earlier a little bit. And for whatever reason, every actor feels like they have to come out and make a statement. I have a theory on it now, just talking about it out loud. All of my agents and managers and lawyers and everything were Jewish. So I, I feel like they're coming out to make a statement in regard to like the people that they work with. Mm -hmm. of like, hey, we support you. Or, um, but then there's others who are like, oh, it's Palestine. None of them have probably ever been there, to be honest with you. I've been. Yeah. I've been to Palestine. I've been to Israel. Yeah. I've, it's, I, I, it's not my place to make a statement. Who the fuck cares what I have to say about it? Right. Right. You know, <clears throat> and, and. You know, this whole culture of, of going to Instagram and posting things that you're not educated on. It's, I get it. You, you want to help. You think that you can maybe draw some, some awareness to a situation through your social media platform. I applaud people for that, you know, but find something that, that you can actually make a difference of, you know. Yeah. If, or ask. Any, any charity. I'll give you an example. You know, mm -hmm. any charity that I post mm -hmm. saying I support, I not only do that to drive content their way uh, financial content, but I also donate money to it, you know? Yeah. And it's all organizations that I've researched that I know where the money's going to. And I know people that it's helped, um, you know, and I, but to, to weigh in on a political situation, just to appease fans or. Right. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Cause if it was about, moving the conversation forward, you would get just as much, you would get way more impact with none of the risk if you just ask thoughtful questions to your audience. Get them thinking about the issue in a way that's outside of the way they thought about it before instead of telling them how to think.